Dave Palumbo back with another RX supplement review. I want to talk about the drug aminoglutethamide, also known as Cytadrin. This was a big drug that was very, very popular back in the 90s because it was more readily available. And a lot of people used it and they thought that that's why the, the guys were so dry and hard in the 90s. And I want to talk about what the mechanism of action is and, and how this drug works. Because a lot of people have been reaching out to me and saying, oh, can you get Cytadrin? Do you know any, anyone? Who, do they still sell it here? They don't make it in the United States anymore. It is made in a couple of European countries now. Cytadrin was originally made as an anti-convulsant drug. It was an anti-seizure drug, believe it or not that they used to give people. And then it was actually used as an aromatase inhibitor for you know, cancer patients uh, before they actually developed like Arimidex and Femara and all those uh, aromatase inhibitors. Now, the problem with Cytadrin, and they found this as a side effect uh, of using the drug on other people, is that it, it inhibited cortisol production. Now, they didn't understand exactly how that worked, and, and obviously there's a, there's a condition out there known as Cushing syndrome where people produce too much cortisol. Uh, and it's just an overwhelming amount of it. They get the big moon faces. And so they found that Cytadrin worked really well. And it, now what they found with Cytadrin was that it had the side effect, which actually pr provided a very good action, of inhibiting cortisol production. Cortisol obviously is produced by the adrenal glands in our body. Those are the glands that sit right on top of the two kidneys. There's two adrenal glands, and they produce cortisol. Cortisol's job in the, in, in the body, a lot of us bodybuilders think of cortisol, it's, anti -catabol it's catabolic, it breaks down muscle. Well, it raises blood sugar. So when blood sugar gets low in the body, it, it's, like a, it's a survival mechanism. The adrenal glands are emergency glands. You know, When you need energy and, and power, they release adrenaline. Well, they also release cortisol to raise blood sugar when blood sugar levels drop. That's why, you know, if you go in for surgery and your blood sugar plummets, you know, the cortisol reaction, you know, takes place and blood sugar raises up. And the way it does that is it causes the liver to engage in gluconeogenesis, which is the production of glucose from amino acids. But cortisol is very important to the body. But we don't want excessive amounts of it, obviously. And in Cushing syndrome, that occurred. And they found that uh, aminoglutethamide or cytadrin inhibited the production of cortisol. Now, the way it does this, okay, is important to understand because bodybuilders think, well, if I take um, cytadrin, I can block cortisol, which will prevent me from losing muscle, and I can gain more muscle. And it'll dry me out because everyone knows cortisol can make you hold water too. Uh, this is what happens. When you take Cytadrin, okay, it prevents the body from producing all the steroidal hormones that take place in the adrenal glands. So it inhibits the conversion of cholesterol into pregnenolone. That's the, the initial step in steroidal synthesis in the body. Once the cholesterol converts to pregnenolone, then the pregnenolone can convert to all the intermediates, DHEA and estrogen and testosterone and uh, corticosterone, which is basically cortisol, aldosterone, which is responsible for sodium uh, reabsorption, and all the other steroidal hormones are made um, from this initial step of cholesterol to pregnenolone production. So in essence, cytadrine inhibits all steroidal synthesis in the body. Not something we want to see. So why do people get dry as bodybuilders when they take Cytadrin? And it happens quickly. Well, think about what's happening. It's really not the cortisol that, that, that's happening. Number one, it's an aromatase inhibitor, okay, at a very low level. So you can take a very low dose of it. It's an aromatase inhibitor. Now, most people are on, on aromatase inhibitors, but back in the day, there were none in the 90s. People used Nolvidex, which, which was an estrogen receptor blocker. So when they used Cytadrin, they completely inhibit estrogen production, which, which obviously dried them out right away. But the thing that really dried them out was it inhibited aldosterone production. And aldosterone is a hormone also produced by the adrenal glands that's responsible for sodium reabsorption. Okay? If you can't absorb sodium, okay, you lose it and you lose water with it. So people dried out really quickly. It was basically like taking aldactone. So people thought it was a cortisol inhibition thing. But it was really the aldosterone inhibition, okay, and the aromatase inhibitor action of cytadrin that dried people out. Now, nowadays, we have aromatase inhibitors, so we don't need cytadrin because ha cytadrin has a lot of side effects. It can make you nauseous. It can cause vomiting. It, it, there's, there's a lot of side The reason why they stopped making it in the U.S. is because it had too many side effects, and it had, it didn't, it had liver toxicity associated with it. Now, most guys don't take it that long, so you're not really, the toxicity issue of it is not a big deal unless it does make you nauseous or cause you to throw up. 
But the problem is that it inhibits all steroidal hormones. We don't want to inhibit aldosterone production. Why? Well, because if you get depleted of sodium too much, okay, and you start cramping, you can't do anything about it. You can't reabsorb sodium. Also, what they found was people who took cytosine, if they stood up too fast, okay, they were passing out. They were getting orth what's called orthostatic hypotension. The reason being is they couldn't absorb enough minerals. And if you can't absorb minerals, you can't hold fluid. And people were walking around dehydrated, which was lowering blood pressure too much, which was causing this orthostatic hypotension, which is lower blood pressure upon rising. Not good. You don't want to get up on stage and pass out while you're posing. So there's a lot of side effects associated with cytodrine. Aside from it being a toxic drug, which doesn't really come into play if you're only using it the last two weeks, it has other side effects and you do not want to inhibit all the steroidal hormones in your body. Not a good idea. It's also not a good idea if you're, you know, if you're not using testosterone because it inhibits testosterone production as well. Okay, so you, you, you know, you, low testosterone is going to be low androgen levels, which is going to make you not look so hard. So cytodrine is really not a drug nowadays that needs to be used. In the 90s, it had some application. The anti-cortisol effect of it doesn't do anything for how you look. It's the aromatase inhibition and it's the aldosterone inhibition. If you really want to inhibit aldosterone, take aldactone. If you want to inhibit the aromatase enzyme system, you take arimidex or femara or aromacin. We have drugs that do that. We don't need a drug that is that powerful. It's too much. It inhibits too much. And we do not want cortisol to be zero. Not smart. If your cortisol reaction or your cortisol levels in your body are not normal, they will not operate on you because it, there's a danger you can die, okay? So we need that cortisol safety net there to raise blood sugar, especially in cases, okay, when you're competing and you're exerting yourself a lot, or if you're in the gym and exerting yourself and your blood sugar plummets, you want another hormone in there that can raise up blood sugar so that you don't pass out. Imagine you're being under squat bar and your blood sugar drops and, you, and you'll die, you'll, the bar will crush you, okay? So it's, I've seen a lot of pro people have problems with that drug, and I don't see those problems anymore in today's day and age because no one's using Cytosurin anymore because it's very, almost impossible to get. But knowing the marketplace out there, anything and everything can be gotten if you try hard enough. My suggestion to you guys is, and you know I'm no prude when it comes to drug use, is stay away from Cytosurin. It's not worth the side effects. I'm Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle Supplement Review.